Hello readers and writers and welcome to lesson one of your ELA School Away From School. I am Miss Novak and I will be your virtual teacher for today's daily lesson. Let's start with some guiding questions. What journey does food take before it gets to your plate? And how do we make decisions about what we eat? Remember that we will be addressing these questions through all of our work together. All right, time to get some materials ready for today's lesson. You're going to need your copy of the text. You'd be surprised how much confusion there is about basic food facts. You'll also need your copy of lesson number one, the lesson number one note catcher, and a pencil. We have one learning target for today's work. I can determine the central idea of an informational text. Let's make sure we keep this learning target in mind during all of our work today. First, we will read our article. You'd be surprised how much confusion there is about basic food facts. As I read aloud the article, please follow along with your eyes on the words that are being spoken. Take a moment to get your article out. It's important to hear the article read in its entirety. Before we start to examine it section by section, feel free to pause the video or replay as needed. Here we go. You'd be surprised how much confusion there is about basic food facts. The Innovation Center of the U.S. Dairy paid for an online survey that asked questions of people all over the country and found something a bit surprising. 7% of all American adults have the wrong idea about chocolate milk. They think it comes from brown cows. If you do the math, that works out to be 16.4 million misinformed milk drinkers. That is more people than the whole population of Pennsylvania. And all of these people do not know that chocolate milk is milk, cocoa, and sugar. The survey has attracted sarcastic or mocking remarks from some. It's surprising that such a large number of people believe chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Even more surprising, perhaps, is that there are not even more people who believe it, given the lack of agricultural education. For decades, observers in agriculture, nutrition, and education have complained that many Americans have little to no education about agriculture. They don't even know where food is grown or how it gets to stores. In the case of chocolate milk, they don't even know what's in it. Food doesn't just come from stores. One Department of Agricultural Study commissioned in the early 1990s found that nearly one in five adults did not know that hamburgers are made from beef. Many more lacked familiarity with basic farming facts. They did not know how big U.S. farms typically are and what food animals eat. Experts in agriculture education aren't convinced that much has changed over the years since then. At the end of the day, it's an exposure issue, said Cicely Upton, co-founder of a nonprofit group called Food Corps. The group brings agricultural and ed nutrition education into elementary schools. Right now, we're conditioned to think that if you need food, you go to the store. Nothing in our educational framework teaches kids where food comes from before that point. Upton and other educators are quick to caution that these conclusions don't apply to everyone in the U.S. Studies have shown that people who live in agricultural communities know a bit more about where their food comes from. People with higher education levels and household incomes know more too. What do you mean pickles or cucumbers? 
But in some populations, there's much confusion about basic food facts. A team of researchers interviewed fourth, fifth, and sixth graders at a school in a city in California. They found that more than half of the students didn't know pickles were cucumbers. They did not know that onions and lettuce were plants. Four in 10 didn't know that hamburgers came from cows. And three in 10 didn't know that cheese is made from milk. The researchers said that everyone they asked recalled the names of common foods in raw form, and most new foods were grown on farms or in gardens. However, the kids did not seem to know how items grown on a farm became common foods. In some ways, this ignorance is perfectly logical. The writer and historian Anne Velisis has argued that it developed hand in hand with the industrial food system. She wrote about it in her book, Kitchen Literacy. As more Americans moved into cities in the mid 1800s, fewer were involved in food production or processing. That trend increased with improvements in transportation and manufacturing. These things made it possible to ship foods in different forms and over great distances. Farm to Kitchen is no longer just a short walk. Villasis writes that in the 20th century, with a relatively brief period, the average distance from farm to kitchen had grown from a short walk down the garden path to a convoluted 1,500 mile energy guzzling journey by rail and truck. After a while, many Americans couldn't imagine the origins of the box cereals or shrink wrapped hot dogs in their kitchens. Today, many Americans only experience food as an industrial product that doesn't look much like the original animal or plant. The USDA says orange juice is the most popular fruit in America. And processed potatoes in the form of French fries and chips rank among the top vegetables. The past 20 years have seen the birth of a movement to reverse this trend, with the agriculture and nutrition groups working to get agricultural education back into classrooms. Making agriculture education a priority. Food Corps worked with slightly more than 100,000 students this year. Groups like the National Agriculture in the Classroom Organization and the American Farm Bureau Foundation are actively working with K-12 teachers across the country. They are helping them add nutrition, farm technology, and agricultural economics to lessons in social studies, science, and in health. The USDA Farm to School Program, which awarded $5 million in grants for the 2017-2018 school year on Monday, also funds projects on agricultural education. Nutritionists and food system reformers say these basic lessons are critical for kids to learn how to eat healthily. It could be important in tackling problems like heart disease and being unhealthily overweight. Upton of Food Corps said everyone could benefit from a better understanding of agriculture. We still get kids who are surprised that a French fry comes from a potato or that a pickle is a cucumber, she said. Knowledge is power. Without it, we can't make informed decisions. Now that we have read the text together, I want you to think about a couple of questions. What is this article mainly about? And what did you learn about? Pause the video here as you think about these questions. Now it's time to have a discussion with your family member, caregiver, or friend. Remember, the central message is a big idea that the author wants you to understand and take away from reading a text. Here are some questions. What do you think the central message of this article is? What details from the text make you think that? And what new information did you learn? 
All right, please take out your lesson one note catcher. Using the lesson one note catcher, draw and label a picture representing the confusion that many people have about basic food facts. Below the picture, write two to three facts from the article that many Americans may not know about agriculture education. Go ahead and pause the video while you complete this work. It's time to wrap up today's lesson. Let's think about how you did with that learning target. I can determine the central idea of an informational text. As a closing, share your writing with someone and tell them why you chose to draw or write what you did. Also, remember to read a book today for 20 minutes. You can also read with a family member, a caregiver, or a friend. I also want you to practice your fluency by reading the article from today for one minute. You can use a timer or you can have someone count to 60. After one minute, count the number of words you read and write that number at the top of your text. Later in the week, we will do this again to see how much you've improved.